start to dig the hole and to construct the stadium. Chuck, if you want to come up and hand you the building foot. Toronto's Sky Dome the first multi-use stadium in the world to boast a retractable roof, an all-weather year-round sports and entertainment palace hosting up to 70,000 people at a time, a city in a building. The design-build challenge to make a structure that can host virtually all international sports and entertainment events, including trade shows and exhibitions. Add to that a 364-seat four-star hotel, a 600-seat restaurant, and a 300-foot-long bar, all of which overlooked the playing field. Throw in a cafe, a country and western bar, and a health club, complete with squash courts, saunas, and a running track. Build it all on time, at a fixed cost. This challenge has now become a reality. It is being accomplished by real people and real companies whose expertise is producing this spectacular multi-use facility. We'd like you to meet the Skydome Design Build Team. The Skydome Team is headed up by Ellis Don Limited, who are the overall managers of the Design Build Project, as well as the general contractors. On the design side, Skydome was the brainchild of Rod Robbie, architect, and Mike Allen, structural engineer. They own the worldwide patents for the roof design. Their companies joined together with the NOR partnership to form the RAND Consortium. The mechanical and electrical design is being handled by H.H. H. Angus & Associates Limited, one of the many consultants engaged by the RAND Consortium. On the construction side, Ellis Don has brought in Ainsworth Electric, who handle all the electrical, lighting and sound systems. Dominion Bridge, who are building the structural steel roof and rotatable stands, has steam contracts who install all the plumbing, heating, and cooling systems. Of course, there are many consultants and subcontractors who are also contributing greatly to the project. I believe one of the most challenging aspects of the construction of the stadium has been the integration of the multi-purpose facility. Our team has not only had to satisfy good sight lines for baseball, but through the use of movable seating has created equally good sight lines for football, soccer, concerts, making it truly a multi-purpose facility. How was achieved from a design perspective? Mr. Michael Allen and Mr. Rod Robbie explain. We created the geometry of all the seats within the computer including the field, we're able to use the computer by placing your eye, a person's eye, anywhere within the stadium, and the computer will generate on the screen exactly what you would see when you're looking at the field, including the people sitting in front of you. So you have this visual check of the sight lines. Very early on, we looked very hard at the Gothic cathedrals. We looked very much at how those people had taken structure, art, function, and welded them completely together so if you took any part of it the structure worked very well but it was artistic the spiritual feeling of the space was great which came about by virtue of the structure so this is essentially what we've tried to do we've tried to it's not an architect's building and it's not an engineer's building so the trick was this this interplay between an architect and an engineer to come up with the ultimate solution that was pleasing architecturally and that worked for us structurally in terms of these mathematic expressions. As Rod and Mike and Zadie began to be plummeted, the new partnership headed Mr. William and staff were called upon to do the detailed technical work required for such a massive project. We were charged with providing enough information to the contractor 
so that he could maintain a very, very rigorous schedule. This meant that we had to put together a very, very large team of highly skilled professionals, that we had to organize them well, and that we um, basically had to produce drawings uh, that could be taken to the field and uh, enable the contractor to uh, maintain his work. Designing the actual building was only part of the challenge. Now every aspect of the building has to actually work. The mechanical designs are the responsibility of H.H. H. Angus Associates. Before we started this project, we went around and explored around North America, around Europe, and looked at other designs. Because of that, we've, I believe, created state-of-the-art. We've used that uh, already on another project, Tottenham Hotspur in London, England. Under all kinds of weather conditions, work on the Sky Dome had to proceed due to the grueling schedule required to have the stadium ready for opening day. Alice Dawn, as general contractor, has had to implement a number of new methodologies on this project. There are 110,000 cubic meters of concrete in this building. That's enough concrete to build 10 apartment buildings 20 stories high. Ellis Dawn is also doing a lot of work themselves on this job to ensure quality control and an on-time, on-dollars construction. But one of the greatest challenges is managing the flow of equipment and people at an incredibly fast track pace. To ensure success of the project, Ellis Dawn's task is to efficiently and economically manage the costs and the schedule. And manage they did. Ellis Dawn have only 30 months to build this huge stadium with an operable roof for a lump sum fixed price cost. To date, they have met every one of their goals. The Sky Dome roof structure is truly one of the wonders of the world. It is being built by Dominion Bridge with consulting engineers Carr and Donald assisting in the designs of the moving mechanisms. Piece by piece, each roof section is tenderly lifted by huge cranes and must be perfectly placed. A total of 9,000 tons of steel over the eight acres of roof site will be erected. These companies are also responsible for the precision required by the bogey mechanisms which actually move the roof. The tolerance of the roof rails must be kept at plus or minus three millimeters. A constant duality between bulk and precision is present on this job with two crane lifts involving up to 90 tons of pre-assembled trusses. Concentration by and from each member of the crew is essential for both the safety and success of everyone on the project. Safety was also ever present in the minds of the designers. Mike Allen explains the safety tolerance of the roof structure. I'm standing here within this magnificent model of the roof of the Toronto Sky Dome. This is a 1 to 100 scale model spanning roughly 700 feet from one support over to the other support. That's roughly 200 meters. We have here a 30-foot diameter. That's a 9-meter diameter hole. We've designed this structure so that this 9-meter hole uh, can occur anywhere within this roof structure. All the steel within that roof structure can assume to, to be disappeared, and the load can be safely transferred around that disabled area through these alternate load paths that you can see here down to the support. The Ainsworth Electric Company became so involved in the Sky Dome project, they decided to become one of the P8 corporate sponsors. Mr. Ken Ainsworth explains. The people involved uh, became very enthusiastic and it spread through our organization like wildfire. We took a look at the, uh, uh, the membership and the partners that were involved in the consortium we decided we would like to become a part of that group, so we joined the consortium. Ainsworth also implemented an innovative cable tray system of wiring that affords excellent flexibility for the stadium's massive power requirements. 
Steen Contractors started out as a small family operation and grew to become a worldwide player in the mechanical contracting business with offices in Latin America and the Middle East. This project has also presented a number of challenges for Steen. It is important to emphasize that the mechanical systems being installed in this project involve conventional technology and methods. This is not unlike the CN Tower, which we were also involved in several years ago, and which was also a unique project. Perhaps the true test of the success of a project of this nature is the financial one. Will Skydome make money? Mr. Martin Connell, Chairman of the Stadium Corporation of Ontario. The Skydome will be a financial success because there isn't a nook and cranny within that facility that doesn't have some kind of commercial activity going on it. It, to my knowledge, it's the only operation of its size anywhere in the world that has a fully integrated hotel operated right within the facility. We're connected to the convention center, so it looks like over the course of a year, we will not have anything less than 200 days where that operation is in full use. When you add that up in dollars and cents, we're looking at something in the order of $45 million a year in revenue and $25 million a year in profit. Of course, the other challenge, and perhaps the most difficult, is pleasing the public those who will be buying tickets for Skydome events. It's non-stop. They're really, they're doing it at a fantastic pace. They're going to get it finished. Well, the, the dome is good for this city, and it's, uh, it's amazing to see how fast it's coming on. It's, you know, people think of it as a, as a dome stadium when, in fact, it's, an it's actually a complex. It's amazing. The construction seems to really be repeating from week to week, even. You can see the difference, and it's just absolutely impressive. And it's going to be lovely once it's done. It's going to be a pride to Toronto. In spring 1989, we welcome you to a world premiere, the opening of Skydome. <laughs>